After Melkor had fled from the Noldoran fortress of Thormenos once his evil had been revealed, Feanor, the prince of the Noldor, was summoned by Manwe to Tanaquetil for a feast to improve the morale of those within the Undying Lands. The Valar believed that Melkor fled north and doubled their watch upon the northern borders. In reality, Melkor went south to Avathar, a land with no light upon the borders of the world. There dwelt a spirit that had descended into Arda to serve Melkor, but who later threw off his lordship and declared herself independent. This being was known as Ungolion. She took the form of a great spider and devoured light and hungered for it, although she hated it. Ungoliant was reluctant to join Melkor. Melkor said to her, Do as I bid, and if thou hunger still when all is done, then I will give thee whatsoever thy lust may demand. Yeah, with both hands. Lightly he made that promise, as he ever did. At the feast Manwe declared, Feanor came alone without any of his house, and he wore no raiment of festival. He was bitter, but he met Fingolfin, his brother, and was reconciled. Fingolfin reached out his hand and said, As I promised, I do now. I release thee and remember no grievance. Feanor was silent and took his hand. Fingolfin said to him, Half-brother in blood, full brother in heart I will be. Thou shalt lead and I will follow. May no new grief divide us. Feanor said to him, I hear thee, so be it. At the time of the greatest beauty of the light of the trees, Melkor and Ungoliant rushed over the fields. Melkor struck the trees with his spear and dug into their cores, and sap poured forth for Ungoliant to lap up with her black beak. The two trees, which lit the world for over 14,000 solar years, were dead. The loss of the trees brought forth a tangible and feelable darkness that seemed to have a spirit of its own. There was silence all throughout Valinor. Manwe perceived a vast darkness moving northward. Melkor had escaped. Orome, the huntsman of the Valar, rode his horse, Nahar, in wrath. Orome and Tolkas, the champion of the Valar, were unable to catch Melkor, and my Ungoliant weaved her unlight about him. Yavanna spoke before the Valar and said, The light of the trees has passed away and lives now only in the Silmarils of Feanor. Had I but a little of that light, I could recall life to the trees. Feanor responded after a pause, and said, It may be that I can unlock my jewels, but never again shall I make their like. And if I must break them, I shall break my heart, and I shall be slain, first of all the Eldar in Aman. Mandos, the doomsman of the Valar, mysteriously said, Not the first. But nobody understood him. Feanor said, This thing I will not do of free will, but if the Valar will constrain me, I shall know indeed that Melkor is of their kindred. Messengers from Formenos appeared, and they bore tidings of evil. Melkor came to Formenos and slew Finwë, the High King of the Noldor, and spilled the first blood in the Blessed Realm. Melkor stole all the jewels from Formenos, and the Silmarils were taken also. Feanor named Melkor Morgoth, the Black Foe of the World. Morgoth would be his name ever after. Morgoth came to the wastes of Araman, the northern lands between the Pelori Mountains and the sea. Morgoth and Ungoliant came to the Helkaraxe, the grinding ice, and entered Middle-earth from that strait. They drew near to the ruins of Angband, and Ungoliant knew that Morgoth planned to flee, and she took him aside, keeping him close to her, and demanded he fulfill what he promised. After Morgoth had surrendered all the jewels to her, Ungoliant said to him, With one hand thou givest, with the left only. Open thy right hand. Morgoth held in his right hand the Silmarils as they began to burn his hand. Nay, thou hast had thy due, for with my power that I put into thee thy work was accomplished. I need thee no more. These things thou shalt not have, nor see. I name them unto myself forever. Ungoliant had grown immensely large and powerful at this time and could easily destroy Morgoth. She tried to strangle him. Morgoth cried and that cry echoed in the mountains. That region was called Lamoth ever after, the land of the Echo. Morgoth's cry was heard by the Balrogs, those spirits that served him in his rule of Atubno, and they rose up and pushed Ungoliant away. Ungoliant went to Beleriand and lived in Ered Gorgoroth, in the valley of Nan Dungortheb, the Valley of Dreadful Death. She begat many spider children there. One of these was Shelob. Some say that Ungoliant devoured herself at last after the height of her famine. Morgoth came to the ruins of Angband. There he delved new dungeons and vaults, and the Thangorodrim were made, the Iron Mountains, as a defense of his evil realm. The race of the orcs multiplied, and his demons were gathered together. Morgoth made a crown of iron, and set the three Silmarils in the crown, and he bore the form of the Tyrant of Atumno as he did in days past. Feanor returned to Tyrion amid the sorrow of the elves, and he called a meeting in the court of the king. Feanor was aggressive and fierce in his words, and was filled with wrath, wrath the most given to Morgoth. 
Feanor claimed the kingship of all the Noldor for himself and openly declared rebellion against the Valar. Feanor called the Valar jealous and mentioned Morgoth as one of their kin. Feanor called his people away from mourning and reminisced about Cuivainen. He spoke to the elves of the honor and the responsibility they had to save and protect the elves who had been left behind on the great journey to the west. Feanor spoke of men and echoed many of the lies of Melkor. Feanor spoke of treasures and great realms to be gained from their journey, to pursue Morgoth to the end of the earth to regain the Silmarils from him. Feanor and his seven sons swore a terrible oath, calling all of the divine forces and all damnation upon them if they broke it. They vowed to pursue with vengeance and hatred to the ends of the world, Valar, demon, elf, or man as yet unborn, or any creature, great or small, good or evil, that time should bring forth unto the end of days, whoso should hold, or take, or keep a Silmaril from their possession. The sons of Feanor all swore this in unison, Mithros and Maglor, Kelegorm, Kurufin, the father of Celebrimbor, and Caranthir, Amrod and Amras. Ingolfin and Turgon spoke against Feanor with fierce words. Finarfin sought to calm them. Orodreth, the son of Finarfin, spoke like him. Finrod was with Turgon. Galadriel wished to be gone. The word of Feanor burned in the heart of Galadriel. Fingon, the firstborn son of Fingolfin, agreed with Galadriel. Angrod and Agnor, the younger sons of Finarfin, stood with Fingon. The most part of the Noldor agreed with Feanor. Greater love among the leaders of the Noldor was for Fingolfin over Feanor. Fingon urged Fingolfin, and that is why he continued on. Finarfin was the most unwilling to leave. Manwe then sent a messenger that said, Thou, Feanor, Finway's son, by thine oath are exiled. The lies of Melkor thou shalt unlearn in bitterness. Valor he is, thou sayest, and thou hast sworn in vain, for none of the Valar canst thou overcome now or ever within the halls of Ea. Not though Eru whom thou namest had made thee thrice greater than thou art. Feanor did not answer the herald, but encouraged freedom among the Noldor. Feanor said to the herald, to tell Manwe that even if he couldn't defeat Melkor, he is not afraid to assault Angband. The Herald of the Valar bowed before him and left. As the Noldor continued their march, Feanor had a need for ships, so he went to the haven of Alqualonde to ask Olwe, the lord of the Teleri. Olwe said, As for our white ships, those you gave us not. We learn not that craft from the Noldor, but from the lords of the sea. We will neither give them nor sell them for any league of friendship. Feanor brooded in dark thoughts. He sent his host to seize the ships by force. The Teleri fought his people and battle broke out between the Teleri and the Noldor. This would become the first kinslaying in the land of Amman. After this terrible act, a messenger, likely Mandos himself, said to the Noldor, On the house of Feanor, the wrath of the Valar lieth from the west into the uttermost east, and upon all that will follow them it shall be laid also. Slain ye may be, and slain ye shall be, by weapon and by torment and by grief and your houseless spirits shall come then to Mandos. Feanor hardened his heart and pressed onward. Finarfin turned back, and he went to Valinor and became the High King of the Noldor in Amman. He did this because of his relationship and kinship with Olwe of the Teleri. Finarfin married Olwe's daughter, Eärwen, and sought to repair that relationship. Fingon and Turgon, the sons of Fingolfin, continued, along with Finrod and Galadriel, the children of Finarfin, although they had little love for Feanor and his sons. The greater part of the Noldor agreed with Feanor and decided to pass on, and they reached the icy and dangerous northern passage of the Hilkaraxa. Feanor, his sons, and the rest of his kin debated what to do. Many, especially the house of Fingolfin, began to grumble about the passage. Feanor knew about this and spoke in secret with his sons. There weren't enough ships to take all of them across at once. Feanor and his sons seized the ships and departed suddenly. Feanor left Fingolfin in Araman. When they landed, Mithros, the son of Feanor and friend of Fingon, asked him, Now what ships and rowers will thou spare to return, and whom shall they bear hither first, Fingon the Valiant? Feanor laughed after this statement, and because of his bitterness for the grumbling against him by Fingolfin's people, Feanor said, Let those who cursed my name curse me still, and wind their way back to the cages of the Valar. Let the ships burn. Feanor set fire to the ships at Losgar. The greatest ships that ever sailed were gone, and Fingolfin's people saw the burning from afar off, and he was filled with bitterness. The host of Fingolfin wandered long in misery. But the strength of these people grew amidst the struggle, and they were at the greatest of their strength. They endured the terror of the Helkaraxe in the dreadful iciness, in the dreadful frozen wastes. Elenwe, the wife of Turgon, the second-born son of Fingolfin, 
perished along with many others. Fingolfin's people had little love for Feanor and his sons. These were the first fruits of the terrible oath of Feanor, and these miseries would continue through the history of the Noldor. Fingolfin's host declared their arrival to Middle-earth at the first rising of the moon. Hello Defenders of Middle-earth, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified on later videos, and also don't forget to check out the lore playlist at the end of this video. Thank you, and have a great day.